There we go, that should be good. All right, um, I'm going to try and do this live. <laughs> well, I do most of that stuff, but um, uh, this is going to certainly be a longer process than I've ever done before. Uh, my name is Inagamekaya, and welcome to ITGK Survives ARC Tutorial Series. Um, I've had someone mention the INI configuration stuff, specifically as it pertains to mods. And yeah, that's something that will be covered here. But um, honestly, if I'm going to cover that, I need to cover a lot of other stuff too. Um, and it's this is more than overdue. Uh, I covered some very basic game setup stuff, but that's all stuff that you would see in the menu. Once you actually start playing ARC and you really want to customize the experience for yourself, then you need to know how to do this. And that this is the piece of software that I use. Now this is just something that makes it easy to do. Um, back when I bought it, I think it cost me 20 bucks. This is the premium version. There is a free version, I believe, at least there was. Um, let me pull up the website and see real quick. Hang on. Okay, so I actually got this wrong when I made the video, so I'm going to go ahead and, and fix that uh, here in the editing room. Um, there is both a free version and a paid version. The free version uh, does not have all of the same features. You can just uh, download it and try it out and see if you like it. The paid version, when I checked, was $15, even though I thought that I swear that I paid $20 for my copy, but whatever. Um, if this is something that you may be interested in, go ahead and take a look. It, I think it's worth it, but that's for you to decide. Technically, everything that this software does is something that can be done by hand in an INI file, so it's up to you to make that decision. So, um, when you start messing with ARC, you're going to need uh, to find your INI files. How do you find your INI files? Well, they're located in your ARC install. The easiest way to find them is to, in your Steam, right click on the game in your library, go to manage and browse local files. And that should pull up a menu. And I'm gonna kind of uh, crop this properly. So, Let's see, it should be in Shooter Game, Saved, Config. Now, if you're running offline, you want the Windows No Editor uh, folder. And this is gonna have these two files right here, game.ini and gameusersettings.ini. These are the super, super important ones. The other ones you really don't need to worry about, but these two are the ones that you're gonna wanna mess with. And if you're not uh, using Beacon, you're going to have to do this by hand. There are some settings in game.ini, some settings in gameusersettings.ini, and you can find a list of all of the settings in uh, the ARC wiki, which I will see if I can find that page and leave a link in the description. Um, it should tell you which INI each setting goes in and at least give you a very basic understanding of, of how to edit things one way or the other. But um, just to keep things kind of simple for now, I will be demonstrating all of the things that you can do with INI edits in Beacon Omni. Um, this is the website if you want to go and uh, download Beacon for yourself and set it up. It makes configuring ARC profiles really, really easy. But let's go ahead and get started because this is going to take a while. So we just started a new project. And let's uh, Okay. And you can actually connect this to um, if you have at least I use Natrato for server hosting. So if you have a, a server you can log into your Nitrato account, say, 
from here and it will push the settings straight over to Nitrato. So this is a little bit out of order because it's in alphabetical order, but you should start in general settings. Okay, so quick cut. I uh, went over the entire general settings menu and by the time I got to the end, I realized, you know, um, really most of the stuff that I'm covering there is pretty simple. So people aren't really gonna need that information necessarily. This is the more important stuff to cover first. So we'll go ahead and cover this. Uh, these are really, this is the, both the advanced settings tutorial, the INI settings tutorial, all of that stuff. Now I'm not touching too much on INI, but all of this stuff is in uh, INI's between game.ini, game user settings, INI. But now I have to cut this from the end of the video and shove it into the middle. So if there's an awkward uh, break, I, I, I apologize for that. But let's uh, go over some of these settings here and we'll just go from one to the next and cover what each of them does. This is pretty much all of the stuff that you can do in an INI. If you want to know exactly how to set it up in an INI, I'll leave a link to the uh, wiki page in the description below. You can go and find it there. Or you can use Beacon. This is Beacon Omni. Uh, this is the tool that I use to set all this up. And then once I'm done, I just click export. And then I can save my game user settings and my game.ini and then just paste them into that area I showed you before. Just paste them in there, launch the game, good to go, beautiful. Okay, so we'll start with the breeding multipliers. So first things first, the uh, maturation speed, when a dino is born, how long does it take to grow up? Um, and this is a really helpful uh, tool here. This is a chart down here of on default rates on multiplayer settings, how long is it gonna take for a creature to grow? So, by as you can see on default settings, it takes a giga 10 days, three hours, 59 minutes, and nine seconds to grow. Okay, well let's, uh, let's just make an example. Let's say we're making a server here. So this server is gonna be running all the time, but we want gigas to take a day to grow so 24 hours so we're gonna want 10 times maturation 11 times maturation no 10 point I could have just done the math this is normally how I make my settings though behind the scenes there you go 10.17 times faster uh, 23 hours 59 minutes and 30 seconds roughly Okay, so now the giga will grow in just about 24 hours. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, we can see that the dodo will take an hour to grow, an hour and a half to grow. Okay, so now we need to make sure that we can imprint on all of these creatures. So we can simply set, we can set this to multiply it by a specific amount, or we can set the period time here. So we want it to be an hour, right? Every hour. And then it up updates this automatically. 0 0.125, one hour. And this will tell you how many imprints. It's gonna take 23 imprints for a giga. Okay, well, that's, that's too much for the giga. That's too many imprints. Or we can't afford to be on for all 24 hours that the giga is growing. So let's say we want 10 imprints, okay? So let's, we triple the amount that we get from each imprint and this will cap at a hundred. Like you can, it'll come around for another imprint and if it's over a hundred, you'll just get zero. So no more problems. Okay, well three is at eight. Maybe that's close enough. 2.5, there you go, 2.5. Now you get, so you're getting 200 or 250% uh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Anyways, you're getting 11% on each imprint. You can imprint it 23 times, but you're gonna max out at 100%. It will not go over 100%. Okay, so the next thing we're looking at is incubation time. And this is both incubation and gestation time, I believe. Maybe it's just incubation time because I thought well, the Reaper, the Reaper uh, gestates. Anyways, 
Uh, as you can see, it takes two days to incubate. Okay, you can leave it in an incubator, but that's a long time. We got our mature speed set to 10. Uh, let's go five. Now it's 10 hours to grow the egg and then 24 hours to have it mature. And then all the way down here, our dodos, 10 minutes to incubate the eggs. So these are still pretty reasonable for a multiplayer server. It's definitely fast. Uh, for a server that's on all the time, this is about as high as I would like to go. I know people that would definitely like it higher. Uh, in fact, I run a server or manage a server for for one such person. <clears throat> oh, I need my tea. Um, this is how often a dino will lay an egg, and um, actually, before we cover this. Let's cover the cooldown. So you can see um, for most creatures, it scales, the sliding scale from 18 to 48 hours. The more that you mate specific creatures, they kind of get fatigued. And so it takes longer and longer between mating periods all the way up to a max of two days. Okay, well, two days is too long to wait when you're maxed out. That's, let's say you're breeding a Rex army. Well, you're getting one bat when you get it all going. You're getting one batch of eggs every two days. That's quite a while to to wait, especially with the other settings being taken into consideration. So let's go alphabetic here and find the Rex, and we're gonna balance around finding a Rex army. So it's gonna take an hour to incubate and just over nine hours to grow with four imprints. That's pretty pretty uh, okay, I guess. Uh, this is pretty pretty fast growing speeds for a server that's going to be left on, but fairly convenient uh, for most people. Okay, so you log on, you raise Rexes throughout the day, uh, if you play Ark for that much time during the day. But one batch of eggs every two days, that's no good. So interval multiplier here. This changes these numbers, so we go less than 1.0 mates more often, Let's say we want it every 12 hours. Okay, well that's a quarter, 0 0.25. Now we can make Rex eggs twice a day. We can leave them on breeding and have a couple batches of eggs ready to go for us when we get back on. Uh, especially if you use things like S plus or SS to automatically harvest those eggs and incubate them for you. You can just hatch one or two batches of Rexes every single day, get your uh, imprints out, get your Rex army bred up, breed for mutations at an okay period. So there you go. This, that's what this changes. And the lower we take this, the shorter these periods get, all the way down to zero, which is instant breeding. As soon as they're done making one fertilized egg, they'll immediately turn around and start making another fertilized egg. If you are launching a single player session, or a non-dedicated server session where you start basically a single player game and then open it to other people. This setting does not work at zero. I believe minimum is 0 0.01, which is half an hour at max. Not really that bad. You can, you can get around this. Um, when you set it to zero though, you need to be careful that your eggs don't automatically hatch in the area they're being laid in. Because if you have the mating interval set to zero, the incubation speed set at a decent rate, and the mature speed set at a decent rate, you leave your server for a couple days. Let's say you and your friends all play on the server and you're just going to take a vacation for the weekend. Nobody's going to play for the weekend, but you leave the server running. Why not? Then you come back and you can't log into your server because these creatures have eggs laid, hatched, grown to adulthood, <laughs> and now you have tons and tons and tons of them in this sea that fries your graphics card and your CPU, lags the server all the way out, and forces you to reset the server back several days or completely wipe the, wipe the save. I suffered through this. It was a raptor breeding project, because I like raptors, because I'm the weird guy. Um, it was a raptor breeding project, and 
lagged out the Genesis 1 server I was on so bad, it took me over an hour to perform admin commands and various other things to get all of those uh, rap it was like two or three admin commands but we're talking about seconds per frame or even at its worst minutes per frame so for me to even know what I was doing and make sure I hadn't made any spelling errors or anything like that I had to wait for it to render the next frame and the next one and the next one and somehow my computer did not crash rendering all that junk and the server didn't crash either but it took me forever to get that fixed so when you set this to zero you have to know what you're doing and be really careful in this case we're just going to say it's 0 0.25 and at its worst they'll be laying at, at fastest every uh, five hours four and a half hours and at its slowest twice a day that's all right now as your babies grow faster there's a feature in arc that uh well it's not necessarily a feature but it's kind of a game balance thing creatures like wyverns here's our poison wyvern here let's say we got an egg and we hatched it it took us an hour to hatch it it's going to take 10 hours to raise is the baby going to starve in that 10 hours okay we might not be able to get all of our imprints but is the baby going to starve out without wyvern milk in that 10 hours you can set it if you want so that it grows so fast it doesn't need any wyvern milk before it becomes an adult and can eat regular meat and then you just force feed it meat to get its food stat up and its health up you can do that if you want the other thing that you can do to keep potential baby starvation a problem and make it still resource intensive, you can multiply how much food babies consume. Is another thing to be careful with. Set this too high and babies that have a low food stat when they're born will starve and die before you can get food in them sometimes. So if you set this to like five, okay. Uh, for most creatures, you'd probably be able to get some food in there before they uh, die. But some things, if they don't have a decent food stat, it might be a little touch and go there for a sec. Just make sure if you up this, especially if you up it more than like two or three, if you start to get into that four or five, six range, um, make sure you're right on top of it and you get them claimed, get food in them, and then check their stats or whatever you're looking for. Um, it's not, not a huge deal. I mean, if anything, you're just set back one baby, which is uh, on this server 12 to 15 hours. So it's not going to be that, that big of a deal for uh, most things. But it's just something to keep in mind. So um, normally up to about 5 I would scale it with the maturation speed. Once this goes over probably five or six, I would make this half. And really, I don't usually ever go over five on this. If this gets up to 20, 30, 40, 50, I, I don't. I, I might just set this to 1.0 and just say, forget it. They're growing so fast, who cares, you know, at that point. And that's only if you want uh, to change settings like that. Um, mating speed multiplier. This changes how long it takes for dinos to create a fertilized egg or to start gestating. And then uh, imprint stat scale. This increases the boost for imprinting or lowers it. You can disable the buff over here, allow anyone to imprint over here. Grace period, if you miss an imprint, it start, the imprint starts to get worse and worse over time this gives you a bigger or smaller grace period um, this is imprint decay the same same thing uh, it's, these two are linked this is how long until it happens and this is how fast once it starts happening how fast it goes now I normally don't have a problem with imprint decay at all so I, I don't think I ever mess with these stats not really an issue but there, you have your uh, imprint settings for your server. You've got your 10 times maturation speed, incubation rate of 5 times, 
food consumption of five times, regular mating speed multiplier, uh, mating interval of 0 0.25, imprint period of 0 0.125, and default imprint settings. Uh, now, crafting costs, you can adjust how long, or uh, not how long, but what it takes to craft every single item in the game. And if you're running mods, depending on what your mod you're running, that might be in here as well. So, Arc Editions, uh, Animals of Atlas, let's see, what else you might use? Dino Storage, these are just ones that uh, I use. Kraken's Better Dinos, Kraken's Aberrant Dinos, Primal Fear, including all of its various stuff. <laughs> Tameable bosses. Simple spawners. I don't know that you would need to put simple spawners stuff in here. Super structures, if you use those. Uh, but yeah, all of this stuff, let's say you're running Krakens. So let's go to Krakens, that are dinos. And now, like a trike platform. Oh, the double T's. Trike plat saddle. And it will, by default, load its uh, resource requirements. And you can change all of that right here and prevent substitutions for it if you want. You can even right click and adjust all the crafting costs of everything in the game. You want things to be half cost, twice as expensive, quantities will be rounded to the nearest hole, rounded up to the nearest hole. You can multiply all of that. You can set up a fiber craft server, transferable element, which by default uses soap. You can use it to transfer soap through a non-modded server and use it as if it was element. Um, uh, Fibercraft is one fiber crafts literally anything in the game. It, it's busted, but it's supposed to be busted. And then you can also replace a crafting ingredient. Let's say you wanted to replace element with cementing paste. You can do that. Make tech with just a bunch of cementing paste now. Once you unlock the tech grams. Um, I normally don't modify any crafting costs, but I have. Um, I used it to set up a custom kibble system, and I completely overhauled the kibble system. Uh, using very specific creature eggs, creatures that you normally wouldn't tame, except in maybe rare circumstances, use their eggs for uh, the kibble. So you had to go out and tame those creatures to get the kibble. And then change the recipes around so that earlier kibbles were easier to make as well. Okay, we should be going again. So anyways, that's crafting costs. Um, and you can just find whatever uh, item you need. Uh, let me uh, untick my mod here because I finished showing this off and it's just going to potentially cause issues. Um, but yeah, so that's your crafting costs. Really easy to set up in this. Uh, <clears throat> you can set it up in INI as well. Obviously, all of this is INI stuff. Um, and it's kind of complicated to set up that way. I only recommend setting up one or two items don't do like every single item in the game like this lets you do it's just too much work unless you use this to automatically fill it out uh, creature adjustments this allows you to change how much damage and resistance they have wild and tamed and uh, again less than 1.01 resistance increases damage and torpor so this does torpor as well you can also replace the creature, so you can uh, choose uh, one creature, uh, say you wanted regular raptor, and then you want to replace it with aberrant raptors, so you get aberrant raptors to spawn on the island or something like that. Or replace raptors with ravagers and have them spawn. You can do that. You can also prevent taming of certain creatures, especially if you're playing a PvP server and you think a creature's overpowered. You can just flat out disable it. You still have to deal with that creature in the wild, something like a Noglin. Deal with it in the wild, but now you don't have to worry about someone taming the thing and then exploiting a server that way. 
You can also prevent transfer. If you're running a clustered server, you can make it so that creature can't be transferred. And you can flat out have the creature removed. You can change all of that here. Uh, okay, and then this is uh, closely related, but uh, somewhat different. These are creature spawns. Um, what I recommend is ticking whatever map or maps you are running. So let's say this was a Ragnarok server we were setting up. So now it's got all of the Ragnarok information loaded. And that's going to come into play here in creature spawns as well as down in the loot drops uh, settings. It's going to affect that too. So our creature spawns. Okay, we've got Ragnarok. So we can create a new spawn point. Here we can pick the different swamp or uh, different spawn points sorry saw swamp the different spawn points for ragnarok or we can uh search for specific creature spawns replace them add to them or uh we can load all the defaults which is something that you can't do in an ini you can't load the defaults but we can quick edit and we can change the colors. So we want a creature to spawn with literally any color in the table, all creatures. And even though we're running our default difficulty scale of level five, which is five to 150, we want creatures to spawn from level 50 to 200. Actually, let's make sure our difficulty set here. Yeah, okay. So yeah, quick, change colors, all colors, 50 to 150. And it will find spawn points for every creature in the game on Ragnarok, and it will replace each of them. And now they all spawn with all the colors at levels 50 to 150, or we could set it to 200, or, you know, we can go above so let's do that. Let's go back to the 50 to 200 and I'll show that that works. <clears throat> They'll still spawn in increments of five as well. So because our difficulty is set to five, um, it will spawn in increments of five, in this case, every single creature from 50 to 200. And uh, that makes things real, real simple. Most of these spawn regions, this is every single region in the game. Uh, in this map that will call for a creature spawn of some kind. Okay, now we want to add a creature. So let's say that we wanted to add uh, shadow mains. So let's find a place for shadow mains. Somewhere that makes some kind of sense. Grasslands. So there are aloes and other things that spawn here. We'll create a new spawn set and I'll show you how to do this. So it'll spawn a shadow main. Okay. And these are weighted slightly differently. So like these are 0.075, so we want to make this probably 0.05. Let's add a shadow main. <clears throat> and again, our range was 50 to 200. You can also change, instead of this, you can offset their levels, so it starts at level 50, or you can multiply their levels. This is usually done for caves. So instead of increments of five, you can set it to be increments of 10, 20, whatever you want. If you start multiplying creature levels, I recommend that you uh, set it up only in difficult areas and also to keep server balance, you can make it so that they're untamable, I believe. Um, is that here? 
Okay, maybe maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can't make it. You can do it in the uh, creature adjustments. You can make sure that they're not tameable. But then you want a specific creature that you can disable taming on just that and not something important that happens to spawn here as well. Got to be careful with that. Um, you could also make a, a creature replacement if you really wanted to. So... <clears throat> So we had Shadow Mane and we need the Shadow Mane female. Fifty to two hundred. And then you can change the spread how high they are in the water, offset from where they're called to be spawned. And this is your color table down here. Uh, distance from various things. Normally you're not gonna need to mess with that too much. The defaults should be good enough. But if you wanna get into that kind of detail, you can. As you can see, these uh, others don't have these settings set. Okay. So there, we've added shadow mains to the grasslands. So now you can tame shadow mains with fish baskets on Ragnarok. Uh, we'll get into this last. Day-night cycle. This is another uh, great thing that this allows you to do. Um, I once ran a real-time server, and this is how you do it. You want your day to be 18 hours would be just trying to show this off and I start talking about cool stuff that you can do and then I forget what the math is. This is a lot of math by the way. Okay, so we want it to be 18 hours and 6 hours. 1080. Three sixty. Okay. So yeah, my math was off. So now it will be day for 18 hours and night for six hours, total 24 hours. And there's your multipliers. You can set a stock multiplier if you want, or you can just adjust the minutes here and it'll uh, compute the multiplier for you. And then if you wanted to say this is running real time, you just log in and whatever time it is, just use the admin cheat uh, set time of day command and just punch in the time that you have. Boom, running in real time. It's honestly pretty cool, but um, not everybody's gonna want want that. Most of the time, people will run either frozen time, so it's always day, or they'll run it so that day is really long and then the night is kind of short and then back to day, which is really long. Um, now, decay and spoil, you can change multipliers for structures, creatures, crops, um, and how long it takes for things to decay. This is uh, literally just stuff that you build after you log off. How long until it can be claimed or destroyed by anybody? Or auto-destroyed, you can set that up as well. And then spoil timer, this is for corpses, items that get dropped on the ground, and then food. How long until stuff spoils, how long until things that you dropped go away, until corpses go away by themselves. You can change all of that here. It's all multipliers, and again, it's got that same, uh, you can just punch in how long you want it to take. Let's say you want corpses to last six hours. Okay, there you go. 24 times on the corpse decomposition. There you go. Now, uh, this is your difficulty setting. Just punch in your maximum creature level that you want. Now, we'll change these other numbers if you are using override official difficulty in your INI that's what this would be um, this is if you're running INI settings this is the most important setting right here is override official difficulty and this changes what maximum level creatures are what you know how good your loot is um, that kind of thing 
And that will also change uh, tech levels. Tech creatures spawn with an additional 20%. Uh, wyverns are an additional so many levels, I think, above what is normally allowed. And then crystal wyverns are additional 50%, something like that. Um, and this, I believe, should change these. Yeah. So I changed it so that it is uh, 225. Now levels go from 75 to 300 on all these. It changed all of these automatically. Uh, which is really nice. Uh, engrams. You can adjust every single engram in the game. And again, if you are running mods, those mod engrams would show up here as well. And you can right click. Or not that. You can uh, use this. You can set it so that all engrams unlock at spawn. Unlock all except tech at spawn. Unlock as you level. Unlock all except tech as you level. Unlock all unobtainable engrams, which is engrams that aren't normally available on that map. As you level, unlock tech automatically at a specific level. Grant the exact engram points that you need at each level so that you're never behind on engram points. And then you can also make everything unlockable at a specific level. You can do all of that stuff automatically, or you can go through and change things one by one. What level you have to be for the engram, how many engram points are required, whether or not it automatically unlocks when you reach that level, and whether it requires certain other engrams to be unlocked as well. So things like, if you wanted, you could go through these, um, let's say you're running a, a PvP server, and you just go down to these metal structures down here, and you just start going through and making it so that you can remove the prerequisites, and now all you, once you get to metal tier, all you need is the metal stuff. You unlock metal structures, and if you want, that's all you've got for structures. That's it. Just the metal stuff. And you can save the engram points on the previous tiers of structures. You don't need that anymore. Um, harvest rates. These are pretty much the same as they were uh, in the video that I made earlier. You can also add rates on specific items. So let's say that we want element dust. Now, this rate is multiplied by this rate. So we have our 4 times harvest rate and 10 times creature damage that I recommended. Okay, but we want a higher than 4 times rate on element dust because we really want people to be able to truly craft uh, element and use it that way. So we're going to go 10. Now you're getting 40 times, and this is another helpful tool here, although easy math. This is a helpful in telling you, reminding you, hey, this is what people are going to actually be harvesting out of this, between this and this. And this is on each item. Um, item stat limits. You probably don't need to touch this as you're getting really into the weeds. This allows you to clamp certain stats so they can't go over a certain point so you can have your armor that doesn't get more than like 500 or damage on your weapons that doesn't go over 300 percent or uh, whatever the case is and that allows you to keep people from having super op gear um but just keep it clamped down if you're running boosted difficulty you may want to look into this or if you're running boosted um, quality on loot drops you may want to look into that levels and XP you can uh, this is extremely helpful for automatic configuration because of how long it takes to punch this in by hand so by default in arc there are 195 levels so you can load the defaults. It should be up to 190. Oh, 190. Okay. So it goes up to 190. Well, we can add extra on top of that and go above 190. Or we can clear this. Click the X, restore. Okay, so we want our two. We're going to go to 200. So we need 199 levels. Okay. Now. We can have totally linear XP progression. I do not recommend this. 
this is either way too slow or way too fast, or both at different points in the game, depending on how you set it up. You can set it to basically insta 200 levels. As soon as you spawn in, poof, you're at max level. I've done that, can be done. Okay, let's say we want to have two, that's 2,000, 20, 200,000, 2 million, 20 million, 200 million. Let's say we want 2 billion XP to be uh, cap, XP cap, which is extreme, but it's uh, doable, possibly, with the right uh, XP sliders. Now we can change this curve. So how uh, steep do we want that curve to be? Now, this is always going to reach the tip. So if I start dragging this, this is not going to um, move this down from the corner. This is just going to move this upper piece, the, the end point. You can drag it down closer like this way, so it's a little bit more level at first. <clears throat> okay, that's too steep. Still too steep. Still too steep. This is uh, doable rates, pretty slow, but it could be done with the right multipliers. And then that last that last level, if you really want to get it, man, it's going to take a while. This is uh, one downside to having things done so much. You can also do this in, in stages. Let's say we want the first 100 levels to be 500 million. It should be 5 million? Yeah. 500 million. So we want this to be 500 million. We're going to set it like that. And we're going to get this to a nice healthy point that we think is pretty, pretty decent. Okay. And then we're going to set an extra 100 levels. So we hit level 200, and this is going to be 1.5 billion. There we go. And this grade over here ended at 50 million. So we're going to add 99 levels. Sorry, I'm really trying to, to demonstrate uh, just what you can do with this stuff. We get that 1.5 billion going. Okay, so the last one was 50, high 50 millions. Okay, well it's currently sitting at uh, 15 million. So we actually need... You could set it like that. It actually gets easier to level up. Or you could have it be like, okay, you hit that threshold. So let's just say, okay, you start getting levels again, kind of at a decent rate. Maybe you make it 2.5 billion. You can set it, you know, however you want. But if you do it on scales like that, it's a little bit easier to, to manage at, at certain points without the numbers getting too difficult to grade. Because, um, like, we got 500 million here at the end, and um, if we were just grading on a scale straight from level 1 to level 200, it, it was getting difficult to fine-tune the grade, so we can do it in chunks, every 50 levels, every 100 levels. You can make it so you're characters can level up to 750, level 900. Uh, you can do the same thing for tames, and again you can load the defaults and see, okay, this is how much it's going to take for 20, 22 uh, million XP to hit that final level threshold. Um, but yeah, that's, that's uh, the XP. This is uh, one of the most useful things and probably something that you're going to mess with quite a bit. Um, especially once you realize what all you can do with it. There's so many different ways to, to configure ARC, it's a lot of fun. 
Now, uh, we're almost done. Um, I think I... No, I didn't go over stack sizes. So let's go ahead. This is uh, this and stat multipliers are pretty easy. So we'll just go over that real quick. So this is the global stack size multiplier. And normally wood and, and stuff like that stacks to 200. If you wanted it to stack to 2,000, 10 times global stack size. And then on top of that, prime meat only stacks to one. Well, now that stacks to 10. So now you can take something that doesn't normally stack and make it stackable. I don't think it works with uh, artifacts, but other than that, things like honey, prime meat, other things that aren't normally stackable, make them stackable. Uh, really helpful for prime meat. And um, I do believe that this gets multiplied by this now. I, I think that's how that works. Um, it, this doesn't have the same tool that the other one did for the harvest rates with the effective multiplier. For stat multipliers, this allows you to change the base stats of players and how much they get per pumping a level of whatever stat. Maybe you want it to be 2% uh, for every level of speed. Or you wanted it to be... Uh, you know, 1% per pump of speed, or you want weight to go up by 100 points every time you level it up, or you want to start with 1,000 weight points, so you basically don't have to level it. You can do all that. Then for creatures, you can multiply how many points they get per wild, per tamed level up, and this, by the way, the wild changes the tame stats. So uh, a rex that has 20 levels in health, you start uh, leveling it up after you've tamed it, it's gonna get more points in health per level than a Rex that has 15 levels into health wild after you've tamed it. So keep that in mind. Wild first, tamed is a multiplier of that. This is um, how taming affects it, I think. These, the, what I do know is that these are not exactly what they sound like. Uh, one has to do with how big the boost is post-tame, the bonus levels that it gets from wild through tamed, and the other one I think has to do with how often it puts stats into something when it uh, allocates those bonus levels, I think that's how it works and then mutagen boost uh, how big you want it to be if it affects bred creatures you can do that as well <clears throat> but uh, there's your stat multipliers let's go to our loot drops this is the last advanced setting and then we'll get back to the section I did earlier with the uh, basic general settings if you want to take a look at that, you're more than welcome to. It's a lot of stuff I've already covered, but I do go through, for the most part, setting by setting. I do it a lot faster. Um, so you may want to take a look at that. Now let's take a look at our loot drops. So we have, and we, again, we can load the default contents of these. So we've got all of our loot drops here on Ragnarok. Okay. So what are we going to get from these different loot crates. Okay, well, whites are normally useless, so let's load our white crates. And here you can see the different sets of gear that'll normally drop, and what quality they will drop at, what the weight is on those things, how often they'll be blueprints, the kind of saddles you can get, uh, different shacks and stuff. Okay, but let's say that there's a, a chance of getting so that uh, you might get lucky early in the game let's get um, a crossbow so there's a chance that a crossbow spawns so early in the game you have a reason 
to go and check out these white drops. It's just going to be primitive quality, 0% chance to be blueprints, and just one. Okay. So now you can get, uh, I know I, I put armor in there. So now you can have a potential for a crossbow to be spawned in there. And because we had all of them selected when we put the crossbow in, then it added it to each one of these individual uh, drops. So any white drop can now contain a crossbow. And that's going to be pretty helpful uh, for someone who's opening a white drop early in the game. But there you go. You can add that to anything. You can change the quality that you get out of drops. Um, a lot of non-ring drops. Ark is known for not dropping good loot. You can take out all the junk if you don't want to get junk. You can change the quality of stuff that you get so you get a lot less primitive stuff. In fact, the other thing that you can do, if I add... We want red. Okay, we want cave red. Okay. So this will load anything from apprentice to journeyman quality. And that's just an approximate quality. That is not exactly what quality it will be. It'll be in that range. Okay. So let's uh, take our stuff here. We have cloth. No, we're not going to want cloth. Tier 4 weapons. This is probably what you're looking for, right? You want your assault rifle, pump action shotgun, fabricated pistol, compound bow. You want good quality. Okay, well, let's start with Journeyman, and you can go up to Ascend it. That's going to be some OP loot, by the way. It, you can lock it to Journeyman, so it's always going to be high quality. You can go above, and it, it gets quality ratings above Ascend it. Epic, Legendary, Pearlescent, and Perfected. You get a, a Perfected Shotgun, that thing's going to have probably, se what's it, cap, 755% damage? I would not be surprised if you found one potentially that quality. It gets insane, the quality of loot that you get at Perfected. It's completely busted. I do not recommend that at all. Unless you're running creatures boosted way, way up and, you know, making this super, super hardcore arc. And then once you start doing that, it can be hard to balance because I tried to do that once. Trust me, it's not easy. I eventually got close, but you can also change the, the stat limiting. It allows items to generate above or below stat item limits. Um, and then you can prevent grinding. <clears throat> on certain items, especially if you've got, let's say you get this pump action shotgun or assault rifle or something. At Perfected, this thing is going to have a ton of polymer and a ton of metal if you grind it. You can prevent grinding, so you have to use the item. You're not allowed to grind it at all. If you really want to do that, you can do that. Uh, but yeah, that's how you mod loot drops. So now let's go ahead and get into the general settings which is something that if you're watching this video, you probably don't need to know, but they are settings that you can change in your INIs and here in Beacon. Okay, so quick edit. Uh, I realized as I finished this uh, video, there's one thing that I forgot to talk about, and it's something that's actually pretty important, is this uh, custom config section right here. Um, because if you have mods or something that you're going to run, you need to use this uh, portion of beacon and if you are um, using just regular INI edits you're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the INI and then just hit uh, actually let me export I can show off this I think uh, so you go you would be in your INI, you'd go all the way down to the bottom, you just hit enter twice, and then this create this is an, an INI section. It tells it what kind of settings are beneath it. So you would just put this in brackets, 
and then you'd start a new section with, with new settings specific to the mod. Now, how do you find mod settings? Well, in the Steam Workshop, let me pull up a mod here. Okay, so this is the custom Dino Levels mod. And this is something that um, I run on pretty much all of my servers. And this usually uh, the INI settings will be in the description. Sometimes they'll be in a pinned discussion. So let's see. So this uh, is a topic that the developer made in this case, explaining each uh, option and where they go and an example like this is how it would be set up so let's just go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it into beacon so this is the mod heading and if you were going to put another mod in you just go like this and then this would be the next mod if this was uh superstructures then you'd have superstructures heading there and some superstructure settings but um now let's say we don't want a setting Really, we don't need to include it, and it will default to its default value. So we want equal levels. We don't need high or Ragnarok levels, so we'll just delete those, and we'll set this to true. This is what's known as a Boolean. It's uh, just true-false. You either say it's true, or you say it's false. So true means this is on, false means it's not. It's that simple. It's just a toggle switch. Um, and then these are values that you will punch in specifically for this one you're not going to need these after the decimal you're not going to need 300 point or, or sorry 30.5 like that's probably going to cause issues honestly um, so usually working in whole numbers usually works better but they'll give you uh, sliding scales usually they'll say it works from this level to this level and that's usually all covered in the in the mod page like i was showing you so we've got our min level and our max level. So this goes in numbers of five, or it was five, it's actually 7.5. So we're actually gonna leave that alone for now, but if we wanted, we could set it to go, let's say right now our dinos go up to level 225. We wanted them to go to level 550. Boom, now they're going up to level 550. We just doubled the level cap, and then now we're back. Um, nope, not that. So let's pull up this over here. And then here's a couple of more examples. Um, <clears throat> if you want to use the min and max level options, you must have the once equal levels option set to true. Okay, so let's take some min levels out. Now let's say we just want from 10 to 30. So they'll spawn from level 75 up to level 225 on this server that we're setting up as an example. And there are some other options. Prevent B, Titan, Max and Min Drake level, and Deinonychus level. So let's copy those settings in, just like that. Prevent B, so now Bees won't follow this level cap. Prevent Titan, so Titanosaurus won't follow the level cap. Drake is for both rock drakes and uh, wyverns, I believe. And then Min Drake, we're just gonna say 20, so that they're all pretty decently leveled. And then Deinonychus level, only up to level 30. So that'll be fine. Um, and there you have it. Now we have our custom level distribution. And as you can see, if we go here, all the way down to the bottom, it should be, oh, here it is in the middle. It, this puts it in the middle. But um, normally you'd see it, if you were just editing it, you can just put it on the bottom. It doesn't have to be in any specific order, really. So there's a custom level distribution settings that we just put in. And then, again, if you were gonna set uh, a second mod, this would be, this would look something like this. Oop, I don't type these keys very often.
make sure that looks proper. So this is, if you had multiple mods, this is probably what it would look like. There you go, just as an example. Um, there are some things that you're going to need to put in the game.ini, but for just mod settings, pretty much all of it goes in game user settings.ini. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to cover that real quick. And now let's get on with the rest of the video. So this is a little bit out of order because it's in alphabetical order, but you should start in general settings. And for the most part, these are going to be settings that you saw in the menu in the uh, video that I made before. But there's going to be a lot more stuff in here. And thankfully, it also explains what each of these settings does. Um, this auto PVE, if the server is set to PVE mode, it will switch to PVP mode um, for a time. Or if it's set to PVP mode, it will switch to PVE mode for a time. So you can only enable PVP at specific periods of the day. Um, I did do that once. It was uh, kind of an odd experience, but there are some people who would probably want that. So Now, building restrictions. Um, there are certain areas in the map that you're not allowed to build in. So you can tick ignore no building zones. You can build wherever. Cave building is normally not allowed uh, in most cases. You can tick it on. And if you're playing PvP, a lot of people like to build in caves in PvP, so you might want to tick that on. This changes the number of structures within a radius. Um, I normally don't adjust this. Uh, maybe you want to tone it down if you're uh, worried about power, you know, like graphical power or processing power in someone's computer. You might turn it down. For the most part, I would just leave it. In the Genesis map, there are areas for missions and normally you're not allowed to build in an area where a mission takes place but you can uh, untick that box well you can tick it to disallow building or untick it to allow building a resource rich areas such as uh, tops of mountains on the island and other areas you may want to disallow people building there and on servers and wiping out important resources like uh, high quality metal and crystal and things like that. Um, simple structure range. Simple structures are things like cables and water pipes and stuff like that. Uh, there's a limit on those normally. You can turn that off. No structure collision is probably something you're going to want to turn on. Um, structures at supply drops I usually have turned on just so people can can build uh, wherever they want and they're not going to obstruct drops. That did mean that in one of the PvP servers that I ran that I had a base where uh, two different drops would drop in the base because my base was so big. Um, for clustering, if you're not going to cluster your servers, this stuff doesn't really matter, but this affects how much you can upload to obelisks, how much you can download, whether you can upload or download, transfer of survivors, and then uh, this is a really important one if you're gonna, especially if you're gonna cluster with aberration. This is cross arc allow foreign dino downloads. Oh yeah, this is another thing. If you hover over the option, it will show you uh, what it would be in the INI uh, if you want to cross reference. So um, there are certain creatures that are normally not allowed on aberration. Things like T-Rexes or Gigas. Um, you would not be able to put those out on Aberration normally. Even if you transferred them in in a cryopod, you wouldn't be able to pop them out. Uh, this is really big for flyers, because flyers completely change the way you play on Aberration. Uh, you may want to turn that on if you have Aberration in your cluster. I personally, I prefer it off. I, aberration is a really unique experience. It is personally my favorite map. How fitting that this is the song that's playing right now. Um, but yeah, um, I just really like the way Aberration plays. I don't want to mess with it, so I leave it off, but hey, you do you. Um, and this is just how long those things will stay available in the obelisk. Uh, 86,400 is 24 hours, I think. So um, here's another thing I normally have on. Force Respawn Creatures makes it so that every time you restart the server, or the world or whatever, it automatically 
uh, performs a dino wipe and repopulates the server with fresh new dinos. You can also set it to run on an interval. You don't have to do that. Normally, server respawn it happens often enough. That's good enough. Okay, cryopods. Yeah, this is a, a debuff that uh, makes creatures weaker and take more damage after they're deployed from a cryopod. Really good for PvP because you don't want someone to just throw out a, like a Giga or something like that. Cryo sickness in PvE, a lot of people will turn that off so that um, there's no cryo timer, there's no cryo debuff or anything in PvE mode. So um, if you turn it on, then those things do take place. You probably don't. Uh, want that if you're playing strictly PvE. It's usually not a big deal. Custom recipes. Um, a lot of people will, will make these custom recipes. I haven't showed how to do that yet. Uh, this is also a multiplier on the effectiveness and how much of an effect crafting skill has on it. Disease. You can pick up diseases like Swamp Fever. Um, you can completely remove disease from the game. You can make it so that if you die, you're cured uh, by ticking these. Uh, this is when you are dumping something, what the max number of stuff you can dump is uh, to keep you from dropping stuff too fast and overloading the server or uh, whatever uh, you might be doing. It's just a, a cap that keeps things from getting too out of hand and, and lagging the server. I've never used dynamic config. Um, it contains values that can be changed without having to restart the server, but I've never done it before. I've never set it up. I've never seen anybody set it up. I usually just stop the server, make the changes I need to make, and then restart it. For flyers, flyer speed leveling is a big thing. Um, it can get kind of busted in both PvE and PvP, which I think is why they made it off by default in Vanilla Arc. You can turn it back on so that you can level up speed, movement speed on flyers. But um, flying is already really powerful, and then when you allow yourself to give extra speed on these things, it can get really out of hand. Um, I play with it both on and off. I usually have it on. Uh, flyers can carry players in PvE. Normally, only on a PvP server can flyers pick up creatures and then drop them. Uh, that includes wild creatures or players, friendly or enemy. Um, now, flyers can carry players in PvE. I think you can still carry friendly players. You just can't carry uh, enemy players or non-allied players. Uh, flyers cannot fly with attached C4. You can force flyers to be grounded if you attach C4 to them. This is... Uh, really common in a, in a PvP setting. You uh, bola someone or you catch them off guard and then you go and you throw C4 on the creature and they have to remove the bola and remove the C4 before they can take off again. Um, you can force flyers to be rideable on all maps. Like in Genesis 1, they're not allowed, you're not allowed to ride flyers on that map. Even though flyers spawn there, you can turn it on, force it on. You can also turn it off and force it off so that you can't ever ride a flyer. And honestly, that sounds like a really interesting idea to me, but I've never had the guts to actually go through with this. Um, you can also make them flyable in caves. Normally when you go into a cave, it'll kick you off. Uh, so you can force it on and allow people to fly in caves. Stamina recovers while flying. This is huge for Quetzals. Because uh, you can build a base on the back of a Quetzal, and then if you dismount the Quetzal and walk around on its plat saddle, it can stay hovering in the air as long as you're not flying it, and it will regain stamina right there in the air. That is a, a really big setting that you might want to change. Um, this is for how often fuel is consumed in structures. These are world buffs for Genesis Part 2 and the multiplier on that. Hex store for Genesis 1 and 2 and multipliers on that. 
kicking idle players and how many seconds it takes until they're considered idle, whether you want to log admin commands to chat or just debug files, uh, loot quality multiplier, which you may want to mess with if you change your difficulty, because if you change it too high, you might get loot that you think is too good. You have it too low, you might get loot that you think is too bad. How good the loot from fishing is. Um, so you might want to you might want to mess with this if you mess with this difficulty setting here. Um, map stasis. I usually have this turned on. It doesn't seem to cause any problems. Um, and this is just um, multipliers for that. Um, but this is uh, on really large bases. It will turn certain parts of the base, unload certain parts of the base to keep the server running more smoothly. And it, it helps. Mesh protection. If you're playing solo or you're playing a PVE server, turn it off. If you're playing PVP, you might want to turn it on. Um, just the... Or you, you want mesh protection on unless you're playing PvE and you don't care really. Um, people can get outside of the map boundaries and so there's a system in place to prevent them from doing that. It automatically kills them and it detects that, that kind of stuff. Well, you can disable that system and 90% of the time you won't have problems. So this is a, uh, a really big one for when you are messing with servers or something like that. A lot of people use one or two mods, even on a mostly vanilla server, they'll use something like Structures Plus or Superstructures. And you can set this so that it automatically updates when it launches the server. And then you want to have your mod IDs in here for when you, um, for when it launches. Now, how do you get a mod ID? Most mods will have it listed on their page, on their mod page, because it, they know that if you're running a server or something, you need the mod ID. And what this is, let's just say your mod is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you have you want to add also mod one, two, three, four, five, seven. Now these aren't actual mod numbers, but this is what it would look look like. And then every time you want to add a mod, you just comma and there's no spaces. You just uh, add it like that. And then you take that on and it'll automatically update the mods and install the updates before it goes. Now, uh, before it launches the server. Now, if you do that, it's important to note that big, big mods, uh, I know Primal Fear is one of them will not install properly if you tell it to automatically download an update. You'll have to update it by hand every time the, the mod updates. If you're running a map mod, you can set that there. I usually also have it set up here. Um, and that will load the, the data for the mod, the map mod. And then you're also going to want to, in the area where you pick your map, you're going to want to pick that specific mod map. Uh, this is really, really complicated stuff. And I just realized there's so much, so much that goes into this. Like, I've been messing with this stuff for over a year at this point. And there's just so much uh, to learn with all of this stuff. It, it takes a long, long time. The platforms. Uh, platform saddles. Um, and I think rafts and motorboats count on this as well. Um, you can set the bounds, you know, how, how big you can build something out, how many maximum structures can be placed, how many platform saddles can be built. If you can have multiple floors, multiple gates, you can uh, change all of that stuff. Uh, player communication. Normally, I don't mess with this stuff. Uh, you can turn on a global voice chat, proximity chat only. Uh, it's not usually... Uh, any big deal. Normally we use Discord for chat anyway. Arc's in-game chat system isn't the best, so I don't usually use it, but hey, it's there if you want it. And then Ragnarok, settings specific to that regarding unicorns and the volcano and how often the volcano goes off. 
uh, raid protection. If you're running a PvP server, this is uh, how long, or if someone logs off, is their base going to be protected from damage? Are their dinos going to be protected from damage? And then how long after they log off until the protect protection kicks in and how long after they log on is it going to stay in place? This has to do with resource spawning around around the map. You place a structure down, well how far away from that structure until dinos will spawn and resources will come in? And how long until resources come back in general? You know, this is all changed here. Uh, for respawns, uh, respawn cooldown means that if you're playing PvP and you die, you're going to have to wait a specific time before you can respawn back in, and if you die within a short period of time, it doubles the length of time by default. It doubles the length of time again, so at first it's a minute, then it's two minutes, then it's four minutes, then it's eight minutes, then it's 16 minutes every single time you die uh, to make people who are attempting to defend their base make it harder and harder for them to defend their base. Here are some basic stats. You're not normally going to mess with this too much. Um, cave structure damage. Uh, when a structure is in a cave, it's going to take this much more damage. Creature damage multiplier, food drain, health, recovery is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Resistance multiplier. Uh, ink upping this increases the damage taken at zero they become invincible. Same with the player resistance. There's all the player stats as well. Uh, swim speed multiplier. I don't usually change. That just means that your oxygen stat makes you swim faster. Um, tamed creature torpor drain, wild creature torpor drain, and wild creature food drain. So this is for... A, like, you can use this as a, a different way to change cryopod nerfing and... Um, narcotic usage, taming speeds, and all that stuff. I used to run five times torpor drain and five times food drain on wild creatures and use that as my taming settings so that it took the same amount of resources, but it would happen five times faster. Well, that comes with its own set of problems. A lot of creatures will start to drain their torpor while you're trying to tame them, and you can imagine how much of a headache that is if it drains five times faster, there were some creatures you literally could not knock out. You would just kill them. And then the, the food drain multiplier means that they will eat faster, but then with things like passive taming, and sometimes you get this high enough, there's some creatures that just don't eat fast enough because their animation has to finish, at least mostly, before they can eat again. Their food drains too fast. They're going to start taking damage. You can kill the creature, and at the very least, you're going to lose taming effectiveness because it's sitting there hungry, even though there's food in its inventory. So you have to be really, really careful if you decide you want to do that. Normally anymore, I just change the taming rate and just say, you know what? It is what it is. Because I don't want to screw up your ability to tame creatures, and I don't want to screw up your taming effectiveness or anything like that so if I'm gonna multiply taming speeds which I almost always do I'm not going to touch these values but you can and you can use it that way if you really want to there may be other reasons that you want to change these values uh, they are here if you want to change them just doubling it you probably won't get too many problems but there will again be some creatures that you, you probably will have difficulty knocking out if you can even knock them out at all such as um, Titanosaurus or probably Titans I would imagine just about anything that's a physical knockout tame but you have to um, batter them instead of trank them I imagine most of those would be difficult uh, this changes a bunch of Steam and Epic stuff. For the most part, you're not going to adjust any of this. You may decide to turn Battle Eye anti-cheat off on your servers or use Vivox, which I think is a, a voice chat system. Um, this is uh, the big one if you wanted to run a, I think they call it Arcpocalypse style server, where there's actually a countdown on the server uh, where a, a meteor will strike the map and wipe it all out and then the save has to be reset and you start all over again. 
I've uh, I only ever do that on my PvP servers. I don't do it on PvE, but I could imagine like PvE with a time crunch could be really interesting. I've just never done it on PvE. I know uh, PvP. I set it for two months, and come the end of the server, there wasn't much activity left, so it just kind of left with a whimper. But that's my group. Maybe you know somebody else wants to have it uh, have it run. And once you turn this on, I'm pretty sure it can be turned off, but it's really really difficult because there's like two or three things that you have to all wipe completely from your um, from your server in order to get it to turn off. So uh, it's kind of kind of frustrating if you want to turn it back off after you turn it on. So be careful with that. And this is number of seconds. So this is 86,400 is 24 hours. So then you're put, punching in a really big number for the number of days. Um, but that's, uh, that's mostly a, a server thing. Uh, structure damage multipliers, I don't usually mess with that. This is uh, resistance for structures and how much additional damage things like spikes do. Uh, how long of a cooldown there is, by default three minutes before it can be repaired. This is uh, one that I usually turn on. Uh, it allows you to, when you place down a foundation, as long as it's completely healed, you can just pick up the foundation again. Just walk over to it, open the radio menu, even if it's been days, just open the radio menu and pick it up again. And um, it's great for traps. You set the trap down, use it for half an hour, an hour, a couple hours. And then when you're done, pick up the trap, haul it away, and you don't have to leave the trap in place. By default, it's off, but I've gotten so used to having it on, I don't feel like it's really that broken. Um, it's just a, a convenience thing, so I usually leave it on. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, this is a really nice uh, feature to have on. Uh, you can limit the number of tames, including only tames that have <clears throat> platform saddles. How many uh, teams can be in a tribe, how many can be on a server, how many a platform saddle costs as a in that limit. So this would be 19 times oh, one single, <coughs> excuse me, one single uh, brontosaurus with a platform saddle would cost the same as 19 brontosaurus with regular saddles. Passive Tame Interval Multiplier and Taming Speed Multiplier. So like I said, if you're playing by yourself, you probably want to uh, quadruple these settings. Um, this is the regular Taming Speed, and this is um, when a creature, let's say it's an Ichthyornis, a dolphin swims up to you and wants to be fed meat. Okay, uh, I feed the dolphin meat, and a, a minute or two later, it's starved enough that you know its food rating has gone down far enough, it could have eat again, but there's a time limit between passive tames that says, oh, you can't uh, tame it right now. You have to wait so long before you can tame it again. I usually turn it completely off. Uh, I set it to zero. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want. Anywhere between one and zero is fine. Going above one, you're risking that creature starving. So keep that in mind. Um, you can set it to whatever you want, but I would say anywhere between one and zero. <clears throat> and I usually run it at zero. For tribes, this is uh, how tribes are structured, how many can be in a tribe, how long tribe logs are, whether you have uh, destruction, you know, what kind of information is stored in the tribe, how long between uh, tribe name changes or slot usages, are alliances allowed, PvP alliances, are tribe wars allowed in PvE, which basically means we're turning on PvP for a little bit, just between the two tribes. And if you have tribe wars on, I would say tribe wars to be cancelled, probably a good idea. Turrets. PvE or PvP, these things cause a lot of lag. You want them to be limited. And I believe... What are the defaults? There it is. Okay, so... You want to limit the number of turrets in range to 100 per 10,000 units. Um, and that that's uh, the default settings, at least 
that uh, are run on my server. And that just keeps people from spamming turrets and creating giant lag machines or uh, impenetrable turret defense. Even still, this uh, 100 turrets and 10,000 units is pretty much uh, pretty much an impenetrable wall of turrets. XP multipliers. Uh, each one of these multiplies something different. This is your base multiplier. I usually only change this option. Sometimes dinos that are herbivores, they're not going to do much killing most of the time. So usually you might want to uh, up this a little bit. But it's also going to affect how fast players level up. So keep that in mind. Same with this. You know, you want extra XP for killing alphas? Well, that's what you want to change. But then every you know everything you kill is going to give you extra XP. Uh, this is passive XP, <clears throat> and this one works actually very similarly to this. Um, it doesn't just change the amount of passive XP that you get, but it kind of bleeds into these other settings too. Like, I don't know if it's a bug, or if it's just tied into that, or whatever the case is. Special XP multiplier also does not seem to work for me. I set it to zero and tried to disable Explorer Note XP boosting, and that didn't work. Okay, now here we have the events. And this actually has our, our drop down. What event do you want to run? And there's all these different options of events that have run throughout ARC's history, uh, including some that come back around. Now, this is basically just event colors. That's it. The extra cosmetics that you can craft in a cooking pot, those are gone. The extra drops, like pumpkins and bones and cake slices and things like that, those are gone. The Valentine's Day chocolates that boost taming by 50%, those are gone. You know, it doesn't spawn any of that stuff. So it's basically just for colors uh, if you want to run an event. And if you want colors, you can turn on uh, mods and stuff that do colors better. And there's actually a way to do it in this uh, creature spawns menu over here. And this, the, some of these really advanced configuration settings is why I recommend using beacon, like uh, creature spawns. That's such a headache to do by yourself. It's almost impossible. And this, click a couple of buttons and it's done. It's so easy uh, is why I use beacon uh, for doing that. Uh, allow Fjorger Biome Teleporting. That is the radial menu option for teleporting. Um, if you're on a server, I would leave it on. But hey, if you're playing by yourself, you might turn it off. Um, and Because there is a portal room that allows you to still travel between those uh, realms. And that's how you were originally supposed to do it. But on a server, you know, that portal room... People are going to camp it and grief people. People are going to build around it and make sure nobody has access. You know, they're going to do all that stuff. Well, le leaving the biome teleporting on, which works similarly to Genesis biome teleporting, gets around that problem. But if you're playing by yourself, you can turn it off, force yourself to use the, the teleport room. It's actually really cool. Um, fun fact, I don't know where the, the biome room is, the realm room. I don't know where it is. So, I, I've seen it on, in videos, but I don't actually know where it's located. But it is a cool way to get from realm to realm if you want to do that. Um, automatic save on a map. How long should it take? How long should corpses last? Normally, you don't need to change that. Same with creature count. Um, that's going to, if you go more than like two, three, that's going to seriously lag your server. So, probably for the most part, just leave it at one. You might go lower than one in some cases. I could see you doing that. Crop growth speed. How fast do you want crops to grow? Um, normally one. Maybe you want to set this to like 100. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't recommend going lower than one. I, honestly, I haven't really messed with it much. I've gone two, three on some of my servers, but that's it. Uh, crosshairs. This little blue plus in the middle of the screen. Do you want that on or off? And you can have, you, if you turn it on, players can still opt to have it off. So if you want it to be on a person-to-person -person basis, turn it on, leave it on. And then if they don't like it, they can turn it off. 
destroy tames over level limit. This keeps people from having overwhelmingly overpowered tames on a map, where they can, through mutations, get some ridiculously powerful dinos, or through um, <clears throat> sometimes creatures that aren't supposed to be tameable become tameable through a glitch for a short period of time. And so people will tame dinos that are level 300 in a cave, and they'll walk out with a creature that's over level 400. Well, this helps to kind of keep that down so that those dinos don't get don't go crazy and destroy PvE or PvP experiences, especially PvP experiences. Unconnected water pipes means that if you have free-floating water pipes and they get uh, pipes next to them get broken, they won't continue to fly in the air. That's personal preference. Gamma changes. Um, you can type gamma commands even without admin privileges in PvE. You can disable it in PvE or enable it in PvP. Creative mode, are you allowing people to toggle creative mode? Only, turn, I think it goes without saying, only turn this on if it's a creative mode server. Otherwise you're gonna give yourself a whole lot of problems if you expect people to be reasonable with this. Somebody's gonna go overboard. Been there, done that. Uh, do you want crossplay between Xbox and Windows Store and I think uh, Epic Games and Steam can also crossplay as well? Uh, PlayStation though and and Switch cannot crossplay. Um, I'm not sure if this is the Steam Epic crossplay or if it's the uh, just for Windows and Xbox. Um, I've never run a crossplay server. I've run a PS4, PS5 server, and I've run, which those are the same, and I've run uh, Steam servers with mods. So I've never messed with that. Um, do you want structures to be locked by default? How fast does hair grow? Hardcore mode means when you die, you get reset uh, to level one and lose all your dinos and structures and stuff. Highlight point of death is the green beam in the sky when you die. Probably want that on. Hit markers uh, means that there will be a red X on your screen. If you hit something, you probably want that on. Dupe checking, if you're running a server, probably leave that on. Low memory mode, um, personal preference, you probably don't need to turn that on for a server. Uh, maximum gates on platform saddles, maximum number of players in the server, maximum safe fall distance multiplier. If you set this uh, higher, they can fall further and further before they start taking fall damage. Um, you might set it just a little bit higher. There are some creatures like T-Rexes uh, that when you walk off their back, you twist an ankle. Um, and if you set it just a little bit higher, it, it, you still die from fall damage, but uh, you won't get hurt jumping off the back of your dino anymore. Uh, you can also set it to like an absurdly high value and just completely eliminate fall damage. <laughs> if it really bothers you, you can do that. Allow multiple attach C4. I probably wouldn't allow this. I think it could lead to some problems with uh, specifically PvP. But if you want to attach more than one C4 to a creature, send them in and then blow the creature up. Uh, kind of a kamikaze run. And you can do that, I guess. Uh, prevent riding creatures, prevent spawning of creatures, prevent taming of creatures. Usually you're not going to mess with these settings. They're pretty self-explanatory. Default spawn items. These are the Federation tech suit on Genesis 2, as it says here. It's also skins and things like that. You can turn that off. Fishing loot, you can disable. Fog, you're probably going to disable a lot of the time. People have a tendency to not like fog. Uh, friendly fire you can turn off in PvE and PvP, where people on the same tribe can hurt each other, you can disable that. Uh, you can disable Genesis missions if all you want is the map. Uh, no HUD, don't ever activate this. If you know what's good for you, just, just don't do it. This is a... no, it's terrible. Uh, loot crates, beacons that come from the sky, you can turn those off. And I think the artifact crates still spawn, so that I don't think that affects that. Although they are technically loot crates, I believe those are still available. Mate boost, when a male and female are next to each other, do they take reduced damage and deal extra damage? You can turn that off. 
Movement optimizations, probably don't want to turn that off. No sky effects, you don't need to turn that off. Spawn animations. I turn spawn animations off on PvP, but otherwise I leave it on. Some people think it's irritating or it takes too long to get back in or whatever. You can turn it off. Uh, speed hack detection. I usually leave speed hack detection on. Join and leave messages. Personal preference. Pretty self-explanatory. How often do you want creatures and people to poop? You can change it right there. Prevent hibernation. Uh, certain, this is really big in, in single player and non-dedicated servers, there are certain parts of the map that will get turned off to save processing power, but that also affects uh, mods and their, the way that they work. I actually have one of the launch commands in my basic settings video is the hibernation command. And this prevent hibernation just um, is, is the same thing. Uh, it keeps certain parts of the map from turning off. Uh, do you want people to publicly land on your cut saddles? You can turn that on. Uh, and that also includes wild creatures, I believe. Uh, PvE mode. I always run PvP servers, even if I'm running a PvE server. It's in PvP mode for PvP features. Um, here's that PvP gamma button. You can turn it on. Random supply crate locations. They normally spawn in set... Uh, locations around the island or other maps you can set it to spawn wherever but on certain maps for instance it mentions Ragnarok a lot of mod maps actually uh, can cause these crates to spawn in the ground so you may not want to turn that on I know in Genesis part 2 it spawned way up I had it on it spawned way up on the roof there's these little struts that come from the wall all the way over to the roof and there was this tiny little blue beam on the side of one of those struts one of the crates had landed technically over there on that little strut right towards the top of the map <laughs> it took me forever to fly up there and get it um floating damage text is little numbers that show up and tell you do you want uh you know this is what kind of damage you're doing uh show location on map uh literally a little arrow spike walls damage all creatures i have that on by default most of the time uh, otherwise, it only damages tamed enemy creatures, I believe. Now, this allows it to damage wild. Uh, structure memory opposite, uh, optimization. If you're not running a structure mod, turn it on. If you are, you probably want it off because it might bug the mod. Uh, tech suit powers on Genesis. By default, they're not available. You can turn them on. Third person camera. I. I don't see why you wouldn't allow someone to be in third person. Uh, titanosaur feeding, and I think this also affects the uh, titans. So if you want to feed the, the giant titans on extinction or the titanosaur on the other maps, you can turn that on here. It allows you to heal them, feed them, and continue to use them. Unlimited respecs. Respecking wipes all of your engrams and your points and stats and it can really lag a server when you start doing that so if you're running a server you probably want it off if you're playing by yourself you can turn it on it's not going to lag that bad and you're the only one that'll be experiencing the lag anyway single player settings i said this uh, in the other settings video i really don't ever use this and then uh web alarms uh i've never used actually so i'm not entirely sure how that works but that's pretty much our uh settings in this oh man i cannot believe how long did that take 45 minutes okay so i've decided what i'm going to do is cut this section out where i go over general settings and put it at the end of the video because this is all stuff for the most part I've covered before so I'll keep it in but you probably don't need to know this if you're actually going through it now maybe you do so I am gonna have it in the video um, but that means I have to do my outro now and then keep recording uh, thank you guys for watching this video um, I hope you enjoyed it if you did uh, watch the whole thing I really appreciate it have any questions feel free to leave them in the in the comment section below 
I know somebody's gonna have a question uh, when they see this video, and I don't blame you. Um, INI settings are really complicated. It's gonna take a lot of time to get down and understand exactly what's going on. And if you're doing this, you're probably also thinking about, hey, maybe I wanna run a server or set up a really advanced game uh, with some really specific changes. And once you get into this kind of stuff, like I go nuts over this kind of stuff, honestly, this level of customization. It's one thing that I love about this game. Uh, it's just how customizable it is. But that means that there's this really steep learning curve into getting into all of this, and we haven't even gotten into setting up servers yet, uh, which I will eventually do in another video. Although the next settings video that I do is probably gonna be PVP stuff. And my recommended settings for PVP. What little uh, experiment experience I have in that respect anyway. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Leave a like if this was helpful to you, or if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what I should work on next, and hopefully the uh, ITGK Survive series should be coming back pretty soon, so I hope you uh, enjoyed that, or are enjoying that. I'm excited to get back into Fjorder and get started again. We put it on a short hiatus, because uh, something else was going on, but we're trying to get back into that. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.